Hi, my name is Ilya Benke and I'm giving you a presentation today on a priority-aware multi-queue NIC design for real-time IoT devices. Of course, I'm going to start with an outline. I will be beginning with a motivation, telling you a little bit about the problems with networking in real-time embedded systems. Afterwards, there's going to be a short background section on interrupt moderation before we go into our approach, the Priority Aware Network Interface Controller. In the end, of course, I will show you some of the experiments we did and the results. So let's start with the introduction. Now, of course, embedded systems have been used to automate physical machines for almost 50 years now. What is usually being used are real-time operating systems on these embedded devices using preemptive schedulers that enforce very high timing predictability for mission critical processes. Since embedded systems also need data from, let's say, sensor devices or somewhere outside the device, we also use interrupts in embedded systems. So whenever let's say a sensor has new data for a process, an interrupt is being triggered, a interrupt service routine is being used to start a process to process the incoming data. Now, interrupt service routines have to operate outside of the scheduler as the events that happen are external. This is also why they preempt any process, no matter the priority of the, the currently running process. The general procedure here is to keep these ISRs very short and predictable. So you usually as a real-time developer know how long the ISR is going to take and what the maximum frequency of incoming interrupts are. Now with the network interfaces coming into play, mainly in the Internet of Things, especially in industrial applications, we also have a new problem. The problem here is that the used network interface controllers also use interrupts to notify the CPU, but we don't as a developer really know how many packets are going to arrive. This is why packet generated interrupts might flood the real time system and block critical processes. A general approach to get over the high amount of interrupts that are being sent by network interface controllers is interrupt moderation. The general idea here is to coalesce multiple packets before interrupting the CPU. This way we can reduce the number of ISR runs under high loads. There are three general approaches to this. The first one is counter-based. Here we simply set a fixed coalescing count and wait until that count is reached before sending an interrupt. The second approach is using an absolute timer. Uh, here we have a periodic timer that triggers an interrupt whenever a fixed period for the network interface controller is reached. The third option are packet timers. They kind of work the other way around than the absolute timer. This timer only starts when a packet is received and triggers an interrupt if not another packet has arrived that resets the timer. What we usually do in practice is to combine the absolute and the packet timers. This way we create a delay window for the packets and know the maximum and minimum times a packet resides in the buffer of the network interface controller before an interrupt is being sent and the packet is being processed by the system. All this, though, is not enough for real-time systems. So let's get into our approach where we try to make a difference between high priority packets that need to be processed as soon as possible and low priority packets where the, the amount of time they have to wait in the buffer is not as important. On the left here, you can see our general NIC adaption architecture. What we are doing is we try to map received IP flows to the receiving process priorities. So whenever a packet arrives at the embedded system, they are distributed to a priority specific queue. These queues apply different moderation parameters. So that way we can have a queue for high priority packets and a queue for low priority packets, for example, 
where the queue for high priority packets does not apply any moderation on the interrupts but sends an interrupt for each packet received while for other packets for low priority packets we apply interrupt moderation techniques and this way have a lower amount of total interrupts generated by low priority packets how does this work uh, on the communication side and on the software side we don't really change a lot on the on the berkeley socket api so a developer who wants uh, who, who develops a process that waits for packets still uses the same api functions however what we did is we extended the receive function uh, we extended the listening function so the wait function so whenever a process binds a port we register those processes priority with the network interface controller so that a packet that is going into that port can be mapped to the specific queue However, the queue configuration needs to be application specific and is not transparent to the developer. This is because every application has different timing considerations to be made. So the configuration of the different queues, meaning what queues exist, how big are the queues and um, what are the moderation parameters for those queues, uh, those are parameters that a developer will configure but can also um, dynamically configure using a process. So let's get into our evaluation. What we did is we used industry typical protocols such as Modbus and implemented four processes on an ESP32 microcontroller. These four processes are of decreasing priority with the highest priority being a process that gets packets right away with no interrupt moderation at all and the other processes depending on their priority have stricter and stricter interrupt moderation parameters applied to them in the first figure here you can see his two histograms over our experiment times of 30 seconds you can see here that the Q0, which is the Q for the high priority task, does not apply any interrupt moderation and hence has the same amount of interrupts as packets received. For the other queues that apply stricter and stricter interrupt moderation, you can see that the amount of interrupts is way lower than the amount of packets received which of course means that the total amount of interrupts in our experiment duration under high load is a lot lower than without our approach. On the bottom left here, you can see the timing implications this has. Here we are looking at the additional runtime of a high priority task under high packet loads. The solid blue line here shows what happens if we don't apply our approach and can see that the, the additional runtime of our critical process increases linearly with the packet load on the system, which eventually, of course, also means that this process will miss its deadline due to the high overhead. The other lines apply differently strict interrupt moderation to the rest of the processes and to the rest of the packet queues meaning that the total amount of interrupts becomes lower the total amount of ISRs that have to be processed becomes lower and hence the additional runtime to our high criticality process also can be minimized. On the bottom right you can see the delay implications this has on the low priority packets. The gray parts of these bars are the additional delay that is being applied to the packets that reside and wait inside the network interface controller because to have less interrupts we also have to take into account that some packets are not being processed right away but have to wait inside the network interface controller under certain conditions and this is with strict moderation parameters of course a lot higher than with medium moderation parameters or no moderation at all yet of course for our critical process this does not make any difference as 
pro as packets of this process are always processed right away.